All right, we have Greg and Joanne here with Intersense. How are you guys today? We're doing fantastic. Doing great. Thanks Good. for having us. Of course, of course. So, since you know, obviously, I've done my research on the both of you, but for the listeners, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your backgrounds and how Intersense was born? Sure. Well, sure, absolutely. Well, both Joanne and I have uh, deep roots in the beauty industry. We both found a love and passion for all things beauty. Uh, As children, really, uh, as Joanne grew up uh, with a passion for it, and of course, I grew up uh, with it through my family. And uh, we kind of, through our careers, uh, found and found each other and fell in love. And of course, as I said, shared just a love and passion for all things beauty and uh, got married and started an amazing family. And it was really kind of a parallel path of uh, starting a family, having a child with a disability and Joanne really turning to health and then turning to labels. And uh, that kind uh, uh, kind of inspired her to begin asking a lot of hard questions as consumer trends were beginning to shift. Uh, at that time of my career, I'd actually left behind the chair and um, uh, was working in big beauty and really began to also recognize the trend to uh, safer cosmetics, so to speak. And really the parallel path of that really led to uh, the development of Intersense. That is awesome. So I didn't know that you were a stylist as well, Greg. Is that what you said? I did, yes. I worked for about 12 years behind the chair. That's amazing. So both you guys. So I used to work for a, um, I used to be a barber full time. Um, and I used to work for a company called fellow barber. Okay. And those, the owners, they're, they're awesome guys, but they weren't barbers. So, I mean, you guys being in the hair industry, it's, it's just, I can bet you guys have such a leg up above, you know, so many other business owners. Well, I think we, I mean, we definitely both have a huge, huge passion for the industry. I mean, for me personally, what I found going into the industry was just the big hearts of the hairdressers Mm -hmm. and just really anybody that I connected with that was in the industry. These people are just healers. They invite people into their chair and they welcome them in Mm -hmm. and people get to sit and kind of divulge their whole life you know, in, in such a sacred space. And I just think hairdressers are healers. And so that was what was astonishing for me as I started my journey on health and just recognizing that there is really, you know, hair and health is a huge thing. And we all want to feel good and look good and wellness being our passion. Mm -hmm. I think it was just astounding for me to find out that these products that I thought were professional products that were great, that worked wonderful on the hair really weren't good for us. And so I think that that was kind of our mission to support the community, which we loved so much. Like I always talked about, like, I just want to raise the vibration of the beauty industry. You know, I mean, just, it's like, to me, like I want to support these people that are caring and loving their uh, consumers so much. Absolutely. Yeah, but to your point too, I mean, every decision we make on a daily basis, it's really the foundation of we come at it from a hairdresser's eyes, right? And I think that that's really kind of, yes, our edge. Super important. It's it's very, very important. So tell me a little bit, because you, you said you noticed, you know, obviously bad stuff or, you know, bad chemicals and products in a sense. Tell me when that, for you guys, that switch happened where you just real, I almost realized a gap in the market of just that these, you know, there were so much of these chemicals that were so bad for you. So where did you guys realize, oh, we should really start this? Yeah, like, well, it was really when, like Greg said, you know, um, we met and fell in love in the beauty industry. And then we started a family. And it yeah. was when our daughter, who is now 24 years old, she uh-huh. was two months old at the time. Yeah. And I was actually pregnant with my son, getting ready to deliver my son. And so Morgan was diagnosed with a rare genetic disability called Williams syndrome. Mm. And so as you can well imagine, that just completely turned our lives upside down. Yeah. And I basically turned to what I can control and what I could control was my health and our family's health. And so I turned to health and then I turned over the bottle and started reading labels basically and realized that there were silicones resins plastics synthetic fragrances and then that at the same simultaneously that kind of 
set Greg off, you know, using all his connections in the industry. But it was also recognizing um, significant movement, especially in the EU, as the EU began to establish some very stringent um, safety standards and being on the product development side of the beauty industry, beginning to recognize these very directives that were really forcing change in the beauty industry. And along that way, also recognizing that there was an emerging consumer that was becoming much more educated uh, and wanting uh, safe cosmetics. Although at the time, uh, we thought it to be much bigger, um, understanding that we're a 15 year old company now. So we were way ahead of the time when we began this journey. And I love that because you guys are way ahead because you were actually passionate about it, right? We're, which I'm sure these bigger brands are now doing it to hop on the bandwagon and kind mm-hmm. of save their asses in a sense. We started the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> I, love it. I think, yes, they're trying to, they're trying to, uh, to jump into the fray, so to speak. Um, but it's kind of a contradiction because they continue to produce the same products that consumers are getting away from. So I think it is a contradiction uh, to be able to do that. It's not authentic. Totally. So tell me what it's like to work, you know, with your life partner and run a business together every day. Cause you know, there's so many couples and you know, you have probably heard this, I'll heard this before. Like, you know, I don't know how you could do that or how you guys spend so much time together, you know, with business and life. So tell me a little bit about that. You see this halo above my head, right? <laughs> They call me St. Joanne. No, <laughs> just totally kidding. <laughs> I've, I've got a thick skin. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a blessing and, you know, it, it has its moments. Like totally. any relationship, it, it definitely has a lot of dynamics um, that, that we've learned to kind of work with and, and learn the dance. And some days are fantastic and other days are stressful. Um, but I think that we both respect each other immensely. We're kindred spirits and we work uh, really uh, as passionate as we are. We know that the, the, we're always ultimately on the same page. We might view things differently. but Which we, is his page. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm adding my own humor in here. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think, you know, it's funny. We, I feel like Greg and I have like the odds stacked against us in uh-huh. a lot of ways, just from the standpoint of we watched a lot of couples when their children were diagnosed uh, with a child with disabilities, you know, separating and divorcing and all that mm. kind of stuff. And then to have a business together. I mean, we've had a lot, like you have that list of stressful things that's in a relationship and yes. we probably check every single box that's there. Yeah. I think that really, um, we focus. So it's, you know, it's where our intention is set and what we focus on is what grows. And I think Greg and I, like he said, we have immense respect for one another. We're not always on the same page with things. I mean, we both have to concede yeah. in certain areas, but it is a practice relationship and focusing on love and what really matters is a daily practice. Absolutely. So not to get too off topic, but I know, you know, doing my research on you guys, you guys are very spiritual. You're very energy driven. Correct me if I'm wrong. So tell us some of the stuff that you've done in your relationship that's kind of molded that, you know, because I'm sure that you guys have had coaches and, you know, all of that, which is super common in the business world. We get fired from coaches more than... (laughs) (laughs) Coaches can't handle us. Right? (laughs) In fact, they they normally quit the profession and go on to something totally different. No. That's really funny. Greg. That is really funny. <laughs> we give them, we give them a run for their money, right? right. Yeah, I, I, I think that you know we've done a lot of different things, a little, a lot of different modalities. I mean, we practiced shamanism together, which was just a we journey. started that in 2011, right. and um, that's something that deeply resonated mm-hmm. with us, just as far as getting back to indigenous cultures and yes. understanding mm-hmm. the earth really cool. provides so much for us and yes. I think there's just um, so much healing within that because mm-hmm. really the reality of it is any expression in a relationship really is only based and triggered on our core wounds so the more that we can heal our own 
core wounds, the more we can show up to relationship, you know, on the middle path and yeah. just really recognizing and owning our own side of the street. So I think it's, again, back to a daily practice. You know, it's something we have to set our intention with. But yeah, we've, we've run the gamut of different practices. But I think, um, you know, of course, we're meditators, for sure. That yeah. supports us. Right. And, a lot of meditation. And, yeah. um, and a lot of golf. Great golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But I, I think, too, you know, along the path, of course, I mean, as a couple, I mean, not only have we, in, you know, embarked in, in a lot of therapy together, but, you know, working together with business coaches also um, allows us to really understand our, our dynamic together and then where we individually play as well. So it's just about a journey of growth. Yeah. So yeah. that's you know, really kind of the way I look at it. It's just a, it's just a constant journey of growth. Yep. I love it. Um, when we get off of this interview, I'll definitely have to pick your guys' brain a little bit more regarding the shamanism. Cause I would love to, uh, you know, go down that route. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my fiance, who is a hairstylist, uh, has noticed your brand almost exploding, you know, with the curly hair demographic. Was that something that was, you know, thought out or planned or just, because of the, you know, reputability of your brand. Right. So, you know, one of the uniquenesses of our formulations and really our chemistry is the fact that we utilize very rich, raw, emollient levels of ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, with that, we've actually removed all of the common cosmetic-based ingredients that are plastics, resins, silicones, microplastics. They're just there to coat the exterior of the hair. And so when we remove those and really just focus on um, hydration, replenishment, and building from the inside out, uh, it just provides immense benefit to the hair shaft. And so the curly textured community, multi-textural community, has really embraced InnerSense for its purity and the performance on the hair. Yeah. And why and the 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 textured community or the curly community so to speak has really embraced us in a big way uh and they're very passionate people so on a social media basis they're very passionate but in our sense products were formulated for all hair types all hair textures uh which just makes us a very uh all-around uh universal product yes and i love is that our daughter morgan she happens to have naturally curly hair so yeah. that's wild thing about it is you know when you think about it it just kind of things kind of run full, full circle it yep. was definitely never anything we intended but it's definitely um been a beautiful unfolding mm -hmm. yes yes so for the listeners out there who are you know could be stylists barbers you know etc you know who have a business mindset or want to create a product line can we give them a simplified process of what it takes to you know get a product and get a product line going and then bring it to market. Ooh, do you use simplified <laughs> in the same sentence of, of you have a product line, <laughs> line going? <laughs> Roland, we don't have enough time here to go through all the therapy right. and tears that it would take to right. do the simplified version. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to say there was a simple path from A to Z on putting a brand out? I Yeah. I mean it's yeah. yeah. You know one thing that, you know, I think that um, someone I often often say is that, uh, do you like to eat? <laughs> Are you willing to risk that? Yeah. Are you willing to risk everything you've got? I mean, yeah. that's what we did, right? And uh, I was told a long time ago that it takes 20 years to be an overnight success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is by no means uh, uh, for the weak. It requires a lot of passion, a lot of dedication, uh, and um, you have to be willing to go and um, not accept failure. And, you know, we, you know, we were in a very unique position that we were able to, you know, stead through that. Um, yeah. And it's taking years um, for us to get to the level of success that we are at. But by no means was it overnight. And uh, not alone not either. Alone. I yeah. mean, not alone. We've had so many people around us cheering yeah. us on. And right. Fans. In and out of the community. You yeah. know, just personally and professionally. Yeah. Okay, so that brings me to my next question. Because, I mean, you touch on a lot of stuff that is just so relatable, what you guys just said there. So if 
when this first started, right, was there one of you that was like, let's just stick to the jobs, like we'll have a comfortable life. And then was there one of you that was like, let's do this. Like, this is the time. Now is the time. Or were you guys both very similar in that sense where you're like, let's go all in, let's jump for it. There were different moments of different ebbs and flows because I think what happened was I saw Greg in the corporate world. And of course I always owned my own business. So I always stood behind the chair owning my own business. And so I, I championed and cheerleaded him on to get out of the corporate world and like, Mm -hmm. let's do this. We've got something viable here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then I think there were times when, um, when the going got really, really rough and I was like a rag on the floor after being beaten down that I was like, please, we can't do this anymore. You've got to throw in the towel. And then that's when Greg kicked in and he was like, no, we're doing this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So, I mean, I think it, it, for us, there's been, you know, both, um, we've been at both ends at different times and like in all relationships, I think that's what happens. Again, it's not for the weak. And, you know, um, I often say, you know, in business, uh, there are two people. There are people who can start a company and there are people who can grow a company, right? So anybody can grow a company. If you have the resources and you have great marketing and you have funding, you can do a lot of things. But it's literally from, from the seed to the ground, right? And then from the ground to the market. That, that's where it, what separates the, the boys from the men, so to speak. Mm-hmm. The girls from the women. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot, you know, and we are very close to a lot of the young peer brands that are now just going through the startup phase. And, yep. you know, startup phase is 10 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are in startup mode for 10 years. Yep. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, and it's a competitive know, space. Very, oh it's yeah. So competitive. I mean, for a brand like Intersense to be competing against the L'Oreal's, the Johnson & Johnson's, the Unilever's, the Inkles, I mean, these are companies that have endless resources, yeah. right? I mean, they put a new brand out and they spend $20 million of just getting it recognized, you know? You know, we, we've had to do that from a very organic grassroots level, so. Exactly. So what is the, what's the long-term you know, vision or goal for InterSense? Is it to, you know, get bought out one day? If, I mean, tell me a little bit about that as well. Have you guys ever thought about that? We're like, if a big brand that's not really all about, you know, having a clean line were to come and approach you guys with a large sum of money, that would be a hard, that would be a hard thing to get over, right? You know, we get those calls. Really? Um, we are being recognized as the market leader in the clean hair care space. Definitely. So, I mean, we're honored by those calls. Yeah. Um, no, this is a mission and, and a purpose for Joanne and I. There's yes. more to just selling the products. This is not a job for me anymore. This yep. is about living my life's purpose uh, and our mission, right? Which is not only, you know, educating consumers to clean, pure, beautiful products, but now we have a whole environmental and sustainability initiative that we're executing that's really going to take this company and our mission to the next level. And we're really about building a legacy brand um, for our community. Uh, and I'm nowhere near ready to retire. So um, awesome. I just don't really foresee that happening. Uh, we have, of course, a 22-year-old son who is just entering the business, and we hope to inspire him um, uh, to really become a part of the business. And as we grow, we'll continue to develop a, a management team that will um, also continue to grow and drive the business so that Joanne and I can do the things that really feed us both personally and professionally together and individually. Absolutely. And since you brought up management team, tell me a little bit about your guys' team now and just, you know, who's really helped you along the process of, you know, with who you've hired and and all of that. Yeah, we have some amazing people working for us. Um, Well, one, I have to, you know, kind of give kudos to our marketing team because they really take our vision um, and, and bring it to life. Uh, and it's a lot. Um, and you know, we're running on a 12 cylinder engine at all given points. When you look at 
all the things that we're managing from everything from our digital presence to branding to product development. And so there's a lot of things happening all at once. So Lauren Droko, who is our director of marketing, is just, um, I mean, the woman does the work of five people. Um, mm -hmm. She's just nonstop. And um, just the, the ultimate of, um, uh, you know, got the I's crossed the T. Uh, and amazing uh, marketing leader, Ari she, Schwartz. She, yeah. I want to say one mm. thing about Lauren. She was actually one of my clients, believe right. it or not. No so way. I met her, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I did her hair forever, and she is mm. happens to be a curly girl, but with uh, finer texture hair. And so I really supported her, her on her path of hair mm. love. And so she can really speak to our brand from a very, very, very personal place. And so I think that it's been such a value to have her. Yeah, and it's, it's become a personal mission for her too. Yeah. So, and then our, our senior associate, uh, marketing associate, Ari Schwartz, who really works uh, hand in hand with me on um, product development. Uh, and uh, also leads branding as well. It's just really grown. Uh, also, one of the things that I really love about her is that uh, her roots uh, comes from the beauty industry. Both of her parents uh, are professionals, uh, and so she has just a great uh, intuition about the business and has just really grown with us in the two and a half, almost three years she's been with us, two years. I think that she's been with us. Yeah. So those are exciting. And then uh, that's also, again, complemented by a number of other marketing people. But then we also have a team of uh, within our sales uh, organization uh, from our sales coordinators, Laura, and our business development people, Adriana and Rosa. Of course, our customer service team, which is uh, um, uh, Amber and uh, Gabri Gabrielle. And then, of course, uh, um, other key office people as well and then a great operations uh, manager who basically helps keep our logistics moving so and then our um, whole warehouse staff, our whole warehouse yeah. staff. Wow. Yeah. so there's a lot there's actually a lot more employees than I even had thought of we're yeah. probably like about 23 23 25, 25 something. yeah, yeah. And then we, we outsource a few of our functions especially on the accounting side but you know, from that point, um, everything else, I mean, I manage pretty much sales, marketing, and P&L. Joanne oversees education and is also involved in communications as well. HR. So, HR. Yeah. Company culture. Company culture. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So was there ever a time where you guys were thinking of creating some type of product that wasn't, or some type of, you know, idea within the hair industry that wasn't just product-based? Or was it always, you know, if you guys kind of knew in the back of your head that if you were going to start something, it was going to be a hair product? Yeah, I'm always, about, I'm a product guy. We okay. are both like that, hands down. I, like, I, yeah. think it, I think it was just like, like I mean, yeah. I don't get was, excited about blow dryers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> when I, the only reason why I asked that is because when I was a barber, I was always trying to think of something, you know, something creative that would just make the work easier you know right in a sense yeah. So, yeah. no i love that i love those innovative yeah, type the of flat ideas. Topper. I always yeah. Like the flat topper. yeah those yeah. i mean there's some really <laughs> cool stuff out there but i don't know it just yeah. seems like this was our destiny yeah, yeah. This was our yeah. Destiny. no that's a, yeah it's very apparent that this is definitely what you guys were you know we were meant to do um for my own curiosity and i jo joanne i know you touched on this a little bit at the beginning but for the listeners as well what kind of chemicals are in most products that are not in your guys' products. I mean, like I had mentioned before, you yes. know, phones, resins, plastics, uh, synthetic fragrances. I mean, Greg can really speak. He don't get him started, or else <laughs> he can go on for days. A whole separate podcast. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, I think the thing that I often say to consumers is that you know, if you're really interested in clean beauty, just because a product says you know sulfate, silicone, and paraben free doesn't mean anything because it's everything in between. Uh, and so even again, uh, there are a lot of silicone alternatives, especially in the polys, right? So polyquaternions, resin silicones, plasticizers, MEAs, TEA, EDTAs, uh, those are, are ingredients that consumers need to be aware of. Ingredients that are known thiolates uh, or ethoxylates. I mean, these are things that consumers need to become much more educated and aware of. I often say, you know, uh, when you look at, you want to kind of dive into clean beauty, go to 
uh, Credo Beauty or go to Detox Market or go to Folane. These are retail organizations that have developed extremely stringent safety standards uh, and, and, and cosmetic standards that, that communities have really embraced. And so really we you know, are constantly striving to develop chemistry that exceeds the expectation um, mm -hmm. to bring our products to marketplace. The other um, thing for your listeners as well is the Think Dirty app. It's an mm -hmm. amazing resource. It's super, super easy to download on your phone. And you can basically scan any product. And um, That's awesome. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just really, really easy to do. Think Dirty, it's called. Okay. Yeah. And one more question before we, we start to wrap up here. Um, we usually like to end the show with this question. So if you could go back at any point in your life, could be when you guys first were starting InnerSense or even any day you'd want and tell yourself one piece of advice, what would that advice be? <laughs> wow, that's a- it's always, It always stumps people. That's a great question. I mean, the first thing that came to mind for me, and this might not be in business, this, yeah. I don't, this is kind of my learning curve over, um, doing hair. And I talk a lot about this in our marketing and just um, wanting to put the message of self-love out there. And I just think that there, there was, I talk about it in one of the stories that I tell about growing up and kind of coming to that place in my life where I was like realizing not everybody was going to like me. It was probably like an elementary school or something like that. I wanted to be friends with somebody so bad. And I went home crying to my mother and, um, you know, and, she was just like, well, Joanne, you know, not everybody's going to like you. And it was like, it burst my bubble. I was like this little kid and I'm like, what? And then I had to kind of relive that through Morgan, having a daughter with special mm -hmm. needs. Because I saw so much rejection and so many, you know, so much disdain from adults and children alike and just her feeling. And she, if you see her, you'll see she's very cognitively aware on a yeah. social level in a lot of ways. So it's not like to just you know, masks over her. So, um, I, you know, I think for me, it's just been the lesson. If I could have told myself earlier, earlier on, like, just like have this just immense amount of like self love, because then it just op opens you up to be able to put yourself out there. And I think i finally have my moments of feeling much more comfortable with that at this age, just because I'm like, Oh, well, if I can't do it now then I'm never going to be able to do it. So here I am. But I, you know, I think I watch Greg and I think that he has, you know, he's had his own work around that, but he's definitely way ahead of the game than I am. So mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something for me about like, again, I'm not sure it's in business, but it's just like, I know vulnerability mm -hmm. has really gone a long way for me. Even when I was behind the chair, like not trying to be this perfect stylist and kind of just cracking myself open and letting people see me. And I'm not talking about in this big emotional way and it has to be therapy or whatever, but just this idea of like, let's just get real with one another yeah. and let's just be. And so the more vulnerable I could be, the more space I can hold for myself, the more space I can hold for other people. And it just adds, it, it creates a connection. And so I'm just, I'm so thrilled about where we're at in the world about inclusivity and just wanting to continue to be that space where people can come healers. We're all healers. We all have stories. We all matter. And so I don't know, there's just something around self love. That's, that's, that's my take. That's just what popped into my head. And that, I'm that's a great answer. It doesn't have to be in, within business at all. So I, I love that answer. How about you, Greg? You got one for yourself or are you on, on board well, with? I mean, look, I mean, I, I, I kind of grew up uh, a unique through a unique childhood. My, my belief is that um, when someone says, no, you can't, I'm defiant. <laughs> You know, I remember when I when I first did the business plan and I would go to the SBA, you know, they would tell me, no, this isn't going to fly. So it just motivated <laughs> me more, right? Yeah. When the man said, you know, this has got to stop, I was like, no, this is, you know, so it was just, it's just an insatiable <laughs> desire not to fail, right? Yeah. I just refused to fail. And so, and I think that, you know, I um, have always been through that way, uh, as I said, it just, it takes a unique uh, psychology to to succeed to grow and succeed in business but it's about um, really perseverance yeah all odds yeah so 
Uh, but I will leave you with this. I think that the thing that I also learned through business, and I had a, a great mentor, especially when I entered the business ranks at you know the corporate level, and and uh, his name was Tom Ridgeway, great guy, and he just always used to say when I would walk in his office and and ask him a question or how to do something, he said, "Well, if you did know what to do, what would you do?" It's like, don't come and ask me. I'm not yeah. going to ask me questions. So, you mean like trust your inner sense. Yeah. Like, trust yeah there it, there it is. It goes full, full circle. Yeah. You know, so I think that that's really, I kind of live that. You know, it's like, if I don't know, if I don't know, what would I do? And I think that I try and really live to that every day. So. Yeah. Well, I love those answers, guys. You have been amazing. Once again, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I think we'll have to have you guys on again in the future once um, – you know, inner sense gets to that next amazing level of the, the, their business. Thank you very Thanks much. So much. Really of course, you guys. Thanks. Thank you again. I'll talk Bye. to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.